Okay, let's keep going. So let's see question three. We'll solve those equations. So those absolute value equations. Let's see eight. So let's recall the definition of absolute value. Yeah. If we have absolute absolute value of x, right, equals to two things. If x is positive, absolute value just is itself. If x is a negative, well, x is a negative x. The uh, absolute value of x is negative x, right? Think about the x as think about the x as a negative two. Well, absolute value of x will be abs absolute value of negative two. So we have changed the negative two to be positive two. What what did happen? It's negative, negative, right? Negative, negative become positive. So when x is a negative, and absolute value of x is negative x. So we always have these two solutions, these two scenarios for absolute value. So now let's see, erase this. So that means for each, so for A, B, C, D, right? For A, let's see A. So for A, we have two cases. First case is 3x minus one is positive. So 3x minus 1 is a positive 5. When we solve this, we get 3x equals to 6. Well, we add 1 on both sides, so x equals to 2. Well, second case, 3x minus 1 is a negative 5 because absolute value of negative 5 is positive, negative 5. So we add 1 on both sides, we get 3x equals to negative 4. So x equals to negative 4 over 3. Two solutions. We can plug in to try to see it. So if x equals two, three times two, six. Six minus one, that's five. If x equals negative four over three, three times negative four over three is negative four. Negative four minus one, negative five. Absolute value of negative five is five. Okay. So we're going to do this. Let's erase this. We're going to do the same thing for B. But B, we still have 2 multiplied by absolute value of 3x plus 5 equals 10. So we can simplify this. Maybe you can divide by 2 on both sides. If we divide by 2 on both sides, we get the absolute value of 3x plus 5 equals to 5, right? So left hand side divided by 2. 2 over 2 is 1. Right hand side 10 divided by 2, that's 5. Then we'll do the same. So if inside 3x plus 5 equals just positive 5, we subtract 5 on both sides. 5 minus 5 is 0. Divide by 3. 0 divided by 3 is 0. Or 3x plus 5 is negative 5. It's a negative number. Then 3x equals to negative 5 minus 5, negative 10. So x equals to negative 10 over 3, two solutions, right? We could see if x is 0, 3 times 0, 0, 0 plus 5, 5, 5 times 2, 10. If x equals negative 10 over 3, 3 times negative 10 over 3 is negative 10, negative 10 plus 5, negative 5. Absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5. So two solutions. Now let's see three, C. C, we want to add one first on both sides. So when we do that, we have absolute value of x equals to 10. That means x equals positive 10 or negative 10, right? Now let's see D. <clears throat> D, we can consider different cases. Well, let's consider. So, D, this one could be positive. This one could be negative, right? This one could be positive inside. I'm talking about inside without the absolute value. Right? Inside, this one can be positive, and this one can be positive. Or this one can be positive, or inside, this one might be negative. Right? This one can be negative, 
This one can be negative. This one can be negative. This one can be positive. So we have four scenarios, but these four scenarios can be simplified as two scenarios. So both positive, both positive, that means they equal to each other, right? If we're both negative, both negative, that also means they equal to each other. Well, if one is plus, the other one is minus, right? This one minus, the other one is plus. So we have two situations. So we divide it into two scenarios. The first one is 4x equals to 2x minus 1, right? Maybe this positive, this positive. Maybe this negative, this negative. The second one is that differ by a sign. Maybe this one is positive, the other one is negative. Or maybe the other one is positive, the 4x is negative. In any case, they differ by a sign. Okay, hope we get this. <clears throat> so the first one is both positive or both negative. The second one is one is positive, the other one is negative. Or well, one is positive, the other one is negative. Okay, so subtract two x on both sides. Four x minus two x. Get two x equal to negative one. So x equals to negative half. Right. So this one, the four x equals to negative two x. Negative negative one become positive one. Add two x on both sides. Six x equals to one. So x equals to one over six. <clears throat> We may plug in the value to try. If x equals negative half, four times negative half, that's negative two. Absolute value of negative two is two. Two times negative half, that's negative one. Negative one minus one, minus two. Absolute value of minus two is positive two. x equals one over six, you'll get a four over six on the left-hand side. Two times one over six is a two over six, which is one third. One third minus one minus two over three, absolute value of negative become positive. So both sides are two over two, two over three, right? Because four over six is two over three. All right, that's three. Now let's look for question four. <clears throat> so now we have absolute value of inequalities. Right? And we want to leave for inequalities, we like to leave the answer as interval notation. And we like to graph on the real number line. Let's see question, question one eight. So let's draw a line to understand the inequalities. Right? Let's say this is a zero, this is a two. If x minus 6, or well, think of x minus 6 together, right? This is greater than or equal to 2. If inside the positive or cross x minus 6 is here, right? Or maybe inside negative. If inside is negative, right, it has to be less than negative 2. Think about, think about this as negative eight, negative let's say negative three, right? X minus six is a neg negative three. Absolute value of a negative three is positive three, right? So that means we have the other way around. X minus six go this way, less than negative two. <clears throat> <clears throat> then its absolute value will be greater than um, positive two. Um, this is a little bit tricky. When it's an equation, we divide it into two cases, right? One equals to positive two, and one equals to minus two. Okay. So we divide into two cases. First one is x minus six itself is positive. It's positive. So it's greater than or equal to two. Then we solve, let's see, 
2 plus 6, 8, right? Because x has to be greater than or equal to 8 because a minus 6 equals 2. Well, this side is saying if x minus 6 is negative, if it's negative, it has to be less than negative 2. That means x less than negative 2 plus 6, that's 4. Positive 4, right? We'll add 6 on both sides. Because positive 4, right, we'll have equal sign here, less than or equal to. Hmm. Less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. You see, 4 absolute value, we right? need to especially for this, because this is negative, right? When we put a negative sign, when we put a negative sign, so four minus six, that's negative two, absolute value of negative two equals to two. Then think about less than four. Think about three, three is less than four, right? Three minus six, that's negative three, Absolute value of negative three is positive three. So it becomes greater than, the solution becomes greater than two. So this this one is a little bit tricky to understand, right? This one is, you know, very intuitive. So we have two solutions. We have, using interval notation, we go from the small one to big one. So this one, x less than negative four, we're starting from negative infinity up to four, including four, because four is okay because we have an equal sign, because here we have a greater than or equal to. So we use a bracket. Union, we use a bracket, x greater than or equal to eight, starting from eight up to positive infinity. Now let's see two. So similarly for this one, but this one now is less than one. So let's graph, let's first graph, right, first graph. So let's see this is zero, this is one, this is negative one. Why do we have to consider negative one? Because it's the absolute value, right? right? But the three X minus four is less than one absolute value. That means the distance has to be inside here. So 3x minus 4, okay, has to be this. So which means 3x minus 4 less than 1, but greater than negative 1. Hmm. Greater than negative 1. Then the absolute value will be less than 1. So what do we do? We can add a 4 on three sides. Add a four, add a four, add a four. Negative one plus four is three. Less than three x, less than one plus four, five. Then we divide by three. Get a one less than x, less than five over three. So that's our solution set. So if we graph the solution set, Maybe zero here, one here, five over three somewhere here. So solution of open circle, open circle, the values in between of these two. Right? Value in between of these two. Because this is less than sum. Now let's see C. C will have a fraction, right? Maybe we multiply by five first on both sides to get rid of the denominator, right? This cancel to be one. So let me write here. That's for C. So three X plus two absolute value greater than five. So similar to eight, right? To the first question. We do three X plus two greater than five is positive, or three x plus two. Maybe, okay, maybe we could think this way. Maybe think, okay, this can be negative. If it's a negative, the absolute value is positive. 
so we put a negative before the negative. That's greater than five, right? Let's see if this is easier for you to understand. So solve for the first one, we'll get a three x greater than five minus two is three x greater than one. For the second one, the negative, just think of three x plus two is a negative number. So if it's a negative number, we negate the negative number. Double negation become positive. So you see this one is exactly the same as we need to multiply negative one, right? Or divide by negative one. So divide by negative one, three x plus two become positive. So negative and negative become positive. That's when we divide by negative number, we have a switch to the sum. Less than negative five. All right. You see the first question I did this way. I said you know, if the inside is a negative, we put a negative less than negative five. So that's that's where it comes from. That's from here. If the number is negative, absolute value is negate the negative number. So could I have a positive number? Okay, now let's see. Solve this. So 3x less than negative 5 minus 2, negative 7. So x less than minus 7 over 3. All right, so the solution for C, let's draw here. We have two numbers. Let's put a 0 here. Let's put a 1 here. Let's put a negative 7 over 3 here. The first set of solution is x greater than 1. The second set of solution is seeing x less than negative 7 over 3. So we're writing interval notation from negative infinity, right? Because this is negative infinity waiting in the end, this is positive infinity waiting in the end. Negative infinity up to negative 7 over 3. Close parenthesis because it's an open circle. Union 1 up to positive infinity. That's the interval notation. Okay, now let's see. Let's let's remember this. Let's see the pattern actually. Remember A is a union of two solution sets. C is also a union of solution sets, two sets. Because the sum is greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to. So that's a pattern for absolute value of functions. For absolute value of inequalities. If the inequality is greater than, so the solution will be a union of two sets. If look B is less than, if the absolute value is less than, the solution set will be this, will be the intersection, like this one. Will be intersection, right? Oh, we didn't write it in the interval notation, so we need to write it in the interval notation. That means the start from one, end at five over three, as an interval notation. So the intersection is part. Okay, so we can, you know, we already have an idea. So this will be intersection. Will be not be the solution for this one will not be a union of two sets. Will be just one set like this. Okay, I need a space, so let me erase this. So now let's look at the D. So first case, x minus four is positive. So just write the positive, absolute value will be positive. Or second case, x minus 4 is negative, absolute value is a negate the negative, two cases. So add 4 on both sides, negative 4 plus 4 is 0, x less than 0. This one, multiply negative, some, negative 1 on both sides, that becomes x minus 4, greater than negative 4 times negative 1, positive 4. Move negative 4 to the other side, x greater than 8. So you see this, Oh, right, this is less than, right? So if inside, if inside is a positive, so we get an x minus four less than negative four. If inside is a negative, so we put a negative, negative, right? Less than negative four. So when we 
by so because it is negative multiplied by negative one, so we have x minus four greater than negative one times negative four. That's positive four. Then we add a four on both sides. X greater than eight. Hmm. You, I, I guess this is the default from this one because this is a negative number, right? Remember this. If it's so, let's say zero is here, minus four is here, where less than negative four goes here, less than negative four. Right? It's not a positive number, so that's x minus four, less than negative four. Hold on a second, I think this has a mistake. Because if x is greater than eight, think about nine, right? Nine minus four is five. Five is not less than negative four. Oh, there's no solution. Because this is less than, we're looking for intersection. There's no intersection of those two sets. So this is x less than negative four, uh, x less than zero, the first solution set is this guy x less than zero. The second one is saying, let's say if this is eight, x greater than eight. The two solution sets has no intersection. Inter you know, there's no intersection for those two, two sets. So there's no solution. So this one, no solution, which is obvious. How could the absolute value less than a negative number? Never. Absolute value, absolute value will be always at least zero. But we solve mathematically, we see, okay, there's no intersection, you know, one, this one goes from less than zero, the other one goes from greater than eight. We may not uni those two. Why? Because this is less than, uni only for greater than, greater than or equal to. Okay, absolute value will never be a negative number. Okay. Now let's see five. So we want to graph those inequalities. Now comparing this from before, before we can solve for x value, where x value would be an interval. But here we have two variables. So y greater than or equal to x minus four. So we have x, y. We have x, y. So how do we graph this? So we think y equals to x minus four. So first we graph this line. And with equal sign, so greater than or equal to, with equal sign, we're going to gra graph a solid line. So let's. So if x is zero, y is negative four. So let's see, this is negative four. So we have this point on the graph. If y is zero, we add a four on both sides, x equals a positive four, right? Let's see, it's positive. So we'll have this long, right? Because this has an equal sign, so I draw a solid line. Now I look at the inequalities. Inequalities is greater than or equal to. That means I shade it above the line. You see, I have two variables that represent the two dimension. Right, so I have x axis, I have y axis. The previous ones, I only have a number long. I only have x axis. That's it. So this is the x axis, x. This is the y axis. So what did I do? You know, I graph the line y equals to x minus four. I graph with a solid line because this has an equal sign. So y equals to x minus four indeed is part of it. Then I have this greater than. So greater than y value greater than, so I shade it above. Because if we pick any point here, the value is greater than this line. Now let's see b. b, I need to solve for y first. Because this y is not solved, so I need to solve for y. So I move x to the other side, it becomes negative. Well, I subtract x on both sides, I have this. 
No, I want to multiply by one, negative one. Then I need to flip the sign. That becomes less than everything become positive now. So I'm going to grab y equals to x plus two first, but I'm going to grab with a dotted line because y equals to x plus two is not part of this inequality. So let's grab here. So I'm going to do the same thing. Look for x-intercept and y-intercept. If x is 0, y is 2. x is 0, y is 2. Let's see, this is 2. If y is 0, x equals to negative 2. Let's see, this is negative 2. So I'm going to graph with dotted line to indicate you know, y equals 2 is not part of the solution. But this one is y less than. So all the y value less than on the line, y value on the line is below the, the line. So I graph below. So those are the solution sets. And look, the solution set are two dimensional because we have x value, have a y value. So the solution is points, all those points. Right? If I pick any point, it has x value, has a y value. Okay, let's compare those two. So the first one has greater than or equal to, so we draw a solid line. The second one doesn't have equal signs, we draw dot the line. The first one is y greater than, we shaded above. The second one in the end is y less than, we shaded below. All right. So same thing, let's do the C and D. We need to solve a y first, right? Look at the C. So we want to subtract 3x on both sides or move 3x to the other side, become a negative 3x plus 12, right? Because 12 is positive, so plus 12. Now we need to divide it by 4. So everything divided by 4. We get negative 3 over 4x plus 12 divided by 4 is a 3. Right? Now we need to graph y equals to negative 3 over 4x plus 3. If x is 0, we see y is so 0, comma, 3, right? Use this point. If x is 0, negative 3 over 4 times 0 is 0. So let's see, this 3 is here. Then let's pick x to be 4, right? If x equals to 4, 4 times negative 3 over 4 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 3 becomes 0. Let's use these two points. If we want to be you know, precise or you know, uh, afraid of making a mistake, we can get a one more point. One more point, maybe we get x equals to 8. x equals 8, very big. Because a times negative 3 over 4, a divided by 4 is 2, negative 3 times 2, negative 6, negative 6 plus 3, negative 3. So we can grab those three points. 0, 3 here is 4, 0. So this is about 3, 4 here, 4, 0. Then if this is a 4, number a probably somewhere here. So this is a 4, this is 8. A negative 3, negative 3 is here. So we have a point somewhere here. Yes, you will see these three points lined up, right? And then there's no equal sign in the inequality. So we draw dotted line to indicate the line is not a part of the solution. Then what about the, the equality? Inequality. Is y greater than? Greater than means we shade the points above this line. So all those are the solutions. All those points, the y value is greater than the y value on the line. Now let's see last one. We move negative 3x to the other side because we want to solve for x, solve for y. Negative 3x move to the other side, become positive 3x minus 15. 
right? Because this is negative 15. Now we divide by negative five. You switch the sum. Divide by negative numbers, switch the sum. Negative three over five, x. Negative 15, divided by negative five, plus three. Now, if x is zero, y is a three, right? We're thinking the equal sign equation. If x is a five, five times negative three over five, that's negative three, plus three, that's a zero, all right? So let's graph with red color. Maybe I use it. Oh, no, I don't want to use this one. I should erase first to do this. Okay, let me graph on the same one, same plane. So I have zero comma three. I have this point. Just look at the red color. Okay, for this one, for D. I have zero comma three. I have five comma zero. Five might be somewhere here. And the equal sign is in there. It's part of it. So I'm going to draw solid line. Right, that's my line. Then look at the inequality. The inequality is greater than. So if it's greater than, I shade it above. So the red color is a 4D, okay? Because I run out of space. Okay, so we see these inequalities are different from the previous. The previous, we only have one variable, X. So the solution, we just mark one dimensional. It's on the real number, X axis. But here we have two variables. So each inequality, we have x, we have y. So that means we're in a two-dimension world. This is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. The solution is a point, has an x value and has a y value. So what do we do? Well, we first we draw the line. We draw the line like y equals to. We solve for y, we draw y equals to x minus four. <clears throat> So the line, if the equal sign is part of the inequality, we draw a solid line. If it's not, we draw a dotted line. Then we look at the inequality. If it's greater than, y greater than, we shade it above. If it's x, y is less than, well, less than, we shade it below, below the line. All right, that's this inequality. Now, it's still inequality. And the first one with one variable, just x. But we're still in two dimension world, why? Because you see the second one, we have x, we have a y. So we do the same thing. So the first one is saying x greater than or equal to a negative two. Well, let's graph that. Let me change my color to be blue again. So let's graph x axis and y axis. So y, x, y. x greater than or equal to negative two. Let's first look for negative two. Because the equal sign is there, so I draw a solid line. So this is a long, long x equals to negative two. For x is greater than negative two or equal to negative two, that's on this side, right? All those values, all those points, the x value, the, the x values are greater than or equal to negative two. So half plane, half plane. Now let's see the second one. Second one, maybe we want to solve a y, right? So two y less than negative x become positive on this side, minus six. Divided by two, so that's y less than half x minus three. If x is zero, y is negative three. If x is two, y is minus two, right? Two times half is one, one minus three, that's negative two. So we have zero, so let's graph with red color. So let's grab zero, negative three, zero, negative three. So that's, so this is negative two. Let's see, negative three might be somewhere here. Zero, negative three, and then two comma negative two. So this is a two, 
So this is three, so this may be one, two. Okay, two, negative two is somewhere, let's see here. Yeah, without equal sign in the inequality, so I draw dotted line. I draw dotted line. Okay, now I look at the inequality sign. Inequality sign is less than, less than I draw down below the line. So you see, I have two sets of solutions. One set is in blue color, one set in red color. Because this is system, right? It has two inequalities, so it makes a system. So looking for the intersection of those two solution sets. So in drawing, we're looking for these grades. You see these grades, right? This means solution for the blue and a solution for the red. So which means the solution for both. Right? So those guys, which is shaded like that. So this is basically the graph of the solution sets. Okay, now let's see. So we see the difference from before, right? Before we just have, we just shaded for one color, either blue or either red. But with the system of inequalities, we have two inequalities. So we better use the two colors, right? Like this, I use one, the first one I use blue color, the second one I use red color, because the system, we're looking for the intersection of those two, in intersection of the two solution sets, which means which, which are those, right? Those are solutions for the blue and also solutions for the red. Now let's see B. So the first one, we're going to rewrite it as a y greater than negative x plus one. Then we want to graph if x is zero, y is one. If x is a one, y is a zero, okay? So let's graph the first one. So let's see if this is a one, this is a one, so I have those two points. Well, equality is not in the inequality, so we draw dotted along. Draw dotted along. And then the inequality sign is greater than, so we draw above the line, we shade above the line to indicate those are the solutions of the inequality. Okay, that's good enough. Of course, it keeps going, right? The line keeps going, the solution set keeps going. Now let's do a second one with the blue color. So we just move negative x to the other side, we have y less than positive x minus three. So pick x to be zero, y will be negative three. Pick x to be one, y will be negative two. Maybe I'll pick a two. One more point, two will get negative one. All right, so if there's zero, negative three, let's see, this was one, right? So one, two, so negative three is somewhere here. Zero, negative three on the line, one comma negative two on the line, two comma negative one on the line, somewhere here. Without equal sign, I draw dotted line, connecting those three points. Okay. Now I look at the inequality sign. Inequality sign is saying y is less than, y less than. So because the red color I draw vertically, so I'm going to draw this horizontally. So all those are my solutions for blue color. Where is the intersection? Do you see the intersections here? You see the intersections here? This, this, this area? 
Of course, this red color keeps going. If I draw more red color, see okay, this red color. I can keep keep drawing this. You see, basically in this right, in this line, this line. So this area is the solution set. So basically, those grades. Usually we put an S to indicate these are solution sets. All right, that's B. Now let's see C and D. Basically we do the same thing. We right? solve our Y first. So we have two Y greater than negative three X plus six, we divide by two, y greater than negative three over two x plus three. We find the points at the if this equation, so we get a zero, get a three, we get two, we get zero, right? You see two, if x is two, two times negative three over two, that's negative three plus three, that's zero. So let's graph the first one. Zero comma three, let's see this three, and two comma zero, let's see this two. So because we don't have an equal sign for the first one, we draw solid dot, we draw dot the line. I'm tired, so I'm starting to draw dot the line. Then we look at the inequality sign, which is greater than, we draw above, the, we shade above the line to indicate solution set. Okay, that should be good enough. Now the second one, I use blue color. Solve the second one, we have negative three Y, less than or equal to negative four X, Last 12, divided by negative three, switch the sign, become y greater than negative four divided by three, negative three becomes a positive four over three x. Positive 12 divided by negative three, that's negative four. Now draw the line y equals to this. So x equals zero, y equals negative four. And then y equals three, at uh, x equals three, y equals zero, right? Three times four over three, that's four. Four minus four, that's zero. So zero comma four, let's see, zero comma, zero comma negative four is here. Three comma zero, this might be three comma zero, right? This has an equal sign. So second one has equal sign, so I draw solid line. I draw solid line. Then I look at my inequality is greater than or equal to. Then that means I draw above, above the line. So the blue color is a, a solution is a solution set for the second equation. But now where is the intersection? Do you see the intersections here? In between the V. So we mark S. This is our solution for the system, for both of them. So similarly for D, D, we solve our Y first, as we have negative Y less than or equal to negative X minus two. We multiply by negative one, we switch the sign of the inequality. Then we let x be zero, then y will be two. If x is, x is uh, negative two, y will be zero. So we use those two intercepts to graph. Zero comma two, let's see this is a two. And then negative two comma zero, let's see this is a negative two. And we have equal sign in the inequalities, so we draw solid line. So solid. 
Then the inequality is greater than, so above the line. Okay, that's enough. Now let's do the second one with the red color. Let's do the second one with the red color. Let's do it here. So negative three y less now equal to negative two x or solving for y plus nine. We divide by negative three, so that becomes y greater than or equal to two over three x minus three, right? Now we look for two points. If x is zero, y is negative three. If x is three, y is two minus three, negative one. So zero comma negative three, somewhere here. Then three might be here. Three comma negative one, maybe somewhere here. Inequality has equal signs, so it's a solid line. Oh, are those two? No. So then I look for the inequality, which is greater than. So I'm going to draw like this. Of course, this keeps going, right? Keeps going. Keeps going. Keeps going. You see the grades? The area of the grades in the solution set. We just put an S here. Right. You see, this part won't be in the solution. This part won't be in the solution. Only the intersection. All right, I'm going to take a little break.